Today we are going to be talking about the MVIX test. So each letter in the MVIX stands for a test. So the MVIX is a set of four biochemical tests and um, it's, it's all in, it's four different tubes, but it's all one test. Um, so in the MVIX is done on gram negative bacteria and it is used to differentiate E. coli from other enteric bacteria. And when we say enteric bacteria, we're talking about the bacteria that are found in your gut. So we are wanting to find out if our unknown uh, bacteria could be an E. coli. Um, so we're going to start out with the very first test in the series, which is what the I stands for. And the I stands for indole. Substrate that we are looking at is tryptophan. So we're looking to see, does your bacteria have the ability to break down tryptophan? Does it produce the appropriate enzyme that breaks down tryptophan into indole, pyruvate, and ammonia? So it's the one, one with the blue cap. Okay? And all that's in this tube is a media called tryptone. And so the substrate that's in it is tryptophan. So we're going to inoculate our bacteria in the tube, let it uh, incubate for 24 hours, and then um, we will add our reagent, which is COVAX, um, to see if indole was produced. So if you get the bright red ring, it's positive for indole. The golden ring is negative for indole. Now, the next test is what the M stands for in MVIX, and that is the methyl red test, or the MR test for short. Um, so the substrate is glucose that is in this tube, and we are looking to see, does the bacteria have the ability to ferment the glucose, specifically mixed acid fermentation? Um, now, in your lab manual, there is a sheet that's called the MVIX cheat sheet, and it is a chart that has everything, um, each test broken down along with the substrates and the reagents added and the results. So I highly recommend that you star that page because everything that you need to know for the MVIX is going to be somewhere on that page. Um, so continuing on with the methyl red test, we are looking at um, for mixed acid fermentation. So when the glucose is used for fermentation, um, so, whereas if you were to use it for respiration, you would get water, CO2, as your end products. Those are basic or neutral end products. For the mixed acid fermentation, when the glucose is fermented, you get acids that are produced instead. It's called mixed acid fermentation because you're getting multiple kinds of acids that are being produced. Lactic acid, acetic acid, succinic acid. So you're getting lots and lots of acid. So when the acid is being produced, the pH is going to go down in the tube, okay? And so when that occurs, we're going to add a reagent, which we'll talk about in a minute, called methyl red. When you add methyl red to the tube, um, you get a red color. That's a positive reaction. A golden color is a negative reaction. So it's very similar to the indole. Red's positive. Golden or yellow is negative, okay? So again, methyl red substrate is glucose, looking to see if the bacteria ferments the glucose yes or no. Now, it's a clear cap. You'll see that the third tube in the series also has a clear cap. These two tubes are exactly the same right now. Okay, They have the same exact media in it. The media is called MRVP. Clear caps. Substrate is the same. It's glucose for both tubes. The difference is the products that we're testing for. For the methyl red, we're testing for acidic products. This is called the VP tube, or the Vogue's Proskauer tube. This is looking for a different type of end product or pathway. This was looking at fermentation. <clears throat> this is looking at this is looking at mixed acid fermentation. This is looking at a different kind. This is looking at the butylene glycol pathway. These end products are going to be basic or neutral end products, kind of like an alcohol. Um, the end product for this, you'll see on that table, is 2,3-butanediol. So if the bacteria takes the glucose, puts it through, through the butylene glycol pathway, and produces 2,3-butanediol, that's what we're testing for. Now, we don't have a reagent that reacts with 2,3-butanediol. We do, however, have a reagent that reacts with the precursor to that. The precursor to that is acetoin, so, <clears throat> which again is a basic end product. So, and we'll talk about the reagents that we add to that in a minute. 
So these two tests kind of go hand in hand with one another. Um, they're both testing for what kind of metabolism is occurring. Substrate in both of them is glucose. In this one, the methyl red tube, we're looking at mixed acid fermentation. In the VP tube, however, we're not looking at mixed acid fermentation. We're looking at the butylene glycol pathway. Acidic end products, basic or neutral end products. Now, there is not a bacteria that we know of that can do both of these pathways at the same time. So your bacteria is either going to be a fermenter, mixed acid fermentation, do the butylene glycol pathway, or not be able to do either one. It's not going to be able to do both of them. So that's how those two tubes work. Now, the last tube in the series is the citrate tube. And you'll notice this one is different. These three are broth. This is a slant. Okay, so you see it's a slant that looks similar to the way that your bacteria were given to you earlier in the semester. It is a green colored slant, and that's because of the pH indicator that's in this tube. For this tube, the substrate is citrate, okay? Sodium citrate, to be exact, if you're looking at that table. So we are looking to see what the bacteria can use as its carbon source. So the only carbon source that is put in this tube is the sodium citrate. So we are looking to see, does the bacteria have the ability to use the citrate as a carbon source? If it can, it will break it down into sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate is a base. So the pH, if the bacteria can use the citrate, it will grow, number one, because this is the only carbon source that's in there. It will grow. And number two, as it grows, it's going to break the citrate down into the bicarbonate. The bicarbonate is going to raise the pH. The pH indicator that's in here, bromothymol blue, will turn blue. So that's a positive result for this tube. You're going to get growth, and it's going to turn blue. If the bacteria can't use the citrate as the carbon source, it's not going to grow. There's nothing else there for it to use. So it's not going to grow. So this tube is going to stay this green color for a negative test. Now, when you put all of these together, E. coli is going to do something diff special for each one of these that differentiates it from other enteric bacteria. Okay, so we'll talk, we're going to read the results now so that this will all make a little bit more sense. So I've already incubated my MVIX for 24 hours. That's what I did at 37 degrees Celsius. The reason why we do that is because the bacteria that are living inside your gut like 37 degrees Celsius. That's around your body temperature. So we incubated these for 24 hours and now we're going to read the results. <clears throat> I inoculated these. Oh, let me show you how to inoculate these. To inoculate these, we use our loop. Okay, so I'm going to use my loop for this. And like I said, we want to differentiate E. coli from other enteric bacteria. So the two bacteria that I used were E. coli. Okay, that's my positive. And then Enterobacter orogenes, which is another um, gut bacteria, common gut bacteria. Okay, so to inoculate these, I simply had to turn on my flame. Okay, so I'm going to need to flame my loop because remember we need to use aseptic technique. So I'm going to flame my loop till it's red hot. Let it cool for a few seconds. <clears throat> now I'm only going to show you inoculating E. coli, but I did E. coli and Enterobacter for my two sets, but I'm only going to show you one because there's no need to do it twice. So once I've let my loop cool, I'm going to go in, pick my bacteria, and I'm going to dip and swirl, okay? So that's all we're doing. Dip, swirl, dip, swirl, dip, swirl, now, for the slant, to properly inoculate that, we have to stab all the way down to the bottom and then slide across the top. Well, let's see if I can show it a little better. Slide across the top of the slant. And that's all you do for this. Play my loop again. Okay. 
in Bordeaux. Okay, so basically all you're doing is you are taking bacterial cells from the plate or from your initial culture and placing them into each tube. Now, your book tells you that you have to flame your loop in between each and every tube. However, that you don't technically have to do that. Okay, whenever we do it in our lab, we just dip, swirl, dip, swirl, dip, swirl, stab, and then come across the top of the slant. Since you're testing different things in each tube and you're adding the reagents to these, it's okay for you to mix the media. Okay, it's no big deal. Now, you're putting the same bacteria in each tube. Okay, so once you move on to the next kind of bacteria, that's when you need to make sure to flame your loop. So I inoculated my MVIX put them in the incubator for 24 hours, and here is my result. So, of course, you can see they kind of all look the same, right? There's really no differences here, okay, because we have to add our reagents, okay? We in um, inoculated these with our bacteria. The bacteria grew, produced those products. Now we're going to add the reagent to see um, what kind of products did our bacteria produce in our tubes. So, the first tube that you always want to start out with when you're reading these results is Endol. That's the blue cap. Okay, that's the one that we're, we're going to start out with first. Um, the way that you always set up an Invix is Endol, Methyl Red, BP, Citrate. That's the way that it's all, it always goes. You, if you always set it up that way, you're never going to get yourself confused. Okay, so <clears throat> here's our Endol. Okay, so let me see if I can move it a little closer for you. You can see a little better. Okay. So here's our indole tubes. I'm going to move them over here just a little bit so you can see the difference. Okay, so I'm going to add, if you can remember, COVAX to my tubes. Here's my COVAX. It's a little backwards, but it's okay. All right, so there's my COVAX. This is what I'm adding to my tubes. So one of these is E. coli and one of these is Enterobacter. Now, if you remember, E. coli is positive for indole. And Enterobacter is negative for Endol. So I added my 10 drops of Covax. Okay. <clears throat> and like I said, E. coli is going to do something different than Enterobacter because that's why we're doing this to be able to tell the difference in the two. So if I take these out, that way you can kind of see the color. Okay. Here's my Endol. That's that nice bright red color that we want. And then here is my golden or burnt orange kind of color is my negative for the Enterobacter, okay? So positive, negative, positive, negative, okay? It's a very clear difference between the two. My coli is positive, my Enterobacter is negative, okay? And remember, this is for the indol test. We're looking to see, did the bacteria break the tryptophan down, yes or no? So that is that test. Now... The next test that we are going to go over the results for is the methyl red test. So remember, we're looking for acidic products here. Did my bacteria ferment my glucose, yes or no? If it fermented it, acids will be produced in the tube. Now, right now, you can't tell if anything was produced or not, okay? All you see is some cloudy tubes. You don't really see anything. We have to add our pH indicator. Our pH indicator is methyl red, okay? That's what the test is named after, is methyl red. So, just like if you were testing pH in your pool, okay, you know the pH testing strips, they change colors based on the pH, this works very similar to that. So, if fermentation occurred, acids will be produced, and the pH in the tube went down, when I add my methyl red, it turns red under acidic conditions. If fermentation did not occur, acids were not produced, this turns yellow, okay? So positive test is red, negative test is yellow. So let's see what our bacteria did. Okay, so these are both red, so that is a positive result, okay? 
Now, let me show you what a negative result would look like. So here's our negative. You see the yellow? So positive red, yellow, negative. So that's our methyl red test. <clears throat> the next test is the VP test. Okay, so this is the Vogue's per scour test. This is the one that's testing for the butylene glycol pathway. So instead of fermentation, did it do the butylene glycol pathway where we get more basic or neutral end products? Now, the two reagents that we have to add to this two are KOH and alpha naphthol. Now I'm going to go ahead and add these to the tubes because this can take a little while and then I'll talk about them. So when we add these two reagents to this tube, we have to mix it really, really well for it to work. This has to react for about 20 minutes or so, 15 or 20 minutes. So we're going to let this sit and react, and then we'll come back to that in a little bit. Now. The last tube is the citrate tube. Now remember, the pH indicator is already in this tube, okay? We don't have to add anything. If you remember, the pH indicator was bromothymol blue. So we don't have to add anything to these tubes. It's already in there. And remember, it's a pH indicator because we are looking for basic end products. If the bacteria was able to use the citrate, it grows, breaks it down into bicarbonate, and then that raises the pH, turning the bromothymol blue blue. Now remember, the tube started out this color, okay? If you can see that, it started out that green color and there's no growth on it, okay? That's what the tube started out looking like. So here's our E. coli tube. Remember I told you E. coli is going to be different than everything else. You can see my streak marks, but there's no growth there. And the tube is green. So E. coli is negative for citrate. It cannot use citrate as a carbon source. Enterobacter, however, can. So you see growth on the tube. Okay. And it turned blue. Okay. So this is a negative reaction. This is a positive reaction. When you put all of these tests together, okay, you will see that E. coli does different than the other enteric bacteria. So that's able to tell us what, that if the bacteria is E. coli or not. E. coli is negative for VP. So it's positive, positive, negative, negative. Okay, that's the pattern for E. coli, and it's different than the other enteric bacteria that we use. Okay? Now, Enterobacter is positive for VP. Now, I'm going to have to give this uh, test about 30 minutes or so to react. So I'm going to do that, and then I will post a picture of what the positive result, or you can look in your lab manual for a picture of what the positive result looks like for VP. VP, a negative result, is a straw color, which is kind of like this. It will get darker as it sits. And then a positive reaction for VP is a red color. It's a dark, dark, dark rust color. Okay. Now, to get that reaction, we have to let it sit for about 30 minutes, and of course, we're not going to do that right now, um, but that's what a positive result looks like for VP. MVIX stands for indole, methyl red, VP, citrate. 
And we're doing this to identify E. coli from other enteric bacteria. End all, we've already kind of covered. Methyl reds, testing for mixed acid fermentation. VP is testing for butylene glycol pathway. And then citrate is looking at the carbon source of the bacteria. Okay. Positives in these tests are red. These three are red. Negatives are yellow slash golden. Now the VP is a straw color, but it's still a, a form of yellow. And then the citrate, a positive reaction is blue, and a negative reaction is green. Now there are pictures of all of these results in your lab manual in the back, so you can look at those, um, or you can also Google them if you wanted to try to get a little bit better pictures of these.